Now, we'll take a wee moment in prayer as the wee ones go upstairs. I can hear a wee one cry in there, so let's take a wee moment and let's commit the wee ones to the Lord. Lord, we thank you for the little lambs that are gathered with us and these little ones that have gone upstairs. And we thank Thee for them, Lord, and we pray that each and every one of them, Lord, that You'll save them. And Lord, when we think of this old world in which they're growing up in, we do pray, Lord, not only will You save them, but You'll, you'll shield them as what Rodney has taught us this morning. And we thank You, Lord, for them, and we just pray now for the little story that they'll be told and, Lord, as they do their little crafts, that, Lord, you'll bless them up there and keep that little congregation above us, Lord, safe and sound. And we pray now, Lord, as we turn to thy word, that we would hear thy voice. Lord, will you take away every distracting thought? And, Lord, that God, the Holy Spirit, will minister to each and every one this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 3 this morning. We're turning in our Bibles to the book of Psalms, and we're in Psalm number 3. Psalm 3. And as we come to this psalm this morning, you'll find that the psalmist is in prayer. It's good to pray. Yet many forsake it. And he pours out his heart, and this is what he prays. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Selah. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. Selah. I led me down and slept. I awaked, for the Lord sustained me, and I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for Thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Selah. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. Not that I'm into art, but I do have to confess this morning, my favorite artist would have to be a man called Thomas Kincaid. Thomas Kincaid was known as the painter of light. I love his drawings. In fact, last Christmas I got a thousand-piece Thomas Kincaid jigsaw. I have started it but I haven't finished it. And I was out visiting Charlie and Cynthia the other night and was talking about this, and Cynthia piped up and says, sure, Charlie could finish it for you. And he didn't disagree, and I could be down with Charlie yet because it's a lovely painting. Now, Thomas Kincaid was a great painter known as the painter of light. And every picture that Thomas Kincaid painted, he used what was called the art of chiaroscuro. Now, don't let me fool you because I said that word that I'm an expert in painting. I suppose I was into artist and painting before I was saved and 
hadn't an ounce of wit because before I was saved, I'd done a lot of painting. Especially around the 12th of July time, I used to paint the curbstones <laughs> up on Clay Street. We got paint supplied to us from a local tractor firm. That's now closed, by the way. The three primary colors were Massey Ferguson Red, Davy Brown White, and Ford Blue. I wasn't really into artists in a perfect way. I didn't paint on canvas. I painted on curbstones. But Thomas Kincaid used that art of chiaroscuro. Do you know what it means? It means using the strong contrasts between light and darkness. Every Thomas Kincaid painting that you'll find, you'll find that he used that image, chiaroscuro. Every picture has the strong contrasts of light and darkness. I find the type of a Thomas Kincaid painting in this Psalm 3 because there's a strong contrast of, of light in the Psalm against a very strong contrast of darkness. There's the light of confidence in this psalm against a very strong darkness that I have called chaos. I'm going to call this wee message this morning confidence in the midst of chaos. We can all face, child of God, great chaoses in life. There's a pile of boys in pulpits today and they preach not on only a pile of nonsense. They say if you get saved, you'll never have troubles. If you get saved, you'll never have trials. If you get saved, you'll never be down. You'll never be discouraged. You'll never be depressed. You'll never have problems. You know, that's not truth. That's just trait that they're preaching. Boys like that who preach like that, they don't know what they're talking about. We had a man who lived up in our part of the country called Charlie Marshall. He died just in January time. And Charlie had this saying, see a boy who talks like that, he doesn't know enough to know that he knows nothing. And I'll tell you the reason why that is. There's some of us who never knew problems until we got saved. Would you agree with me on that? There's somebody, some of us this morning never knew what it was to have pressures until we came to know Christ. I know I didn't. So listen, child of God, maybe this morning you're facing some great chaos in your life. Or maybe this morning you find yourself a breaking point. I know a family, and I have to meet with a brother this week who's a gifted preacher, and he's almost at breaking point. because of the chaos in his life. And maybe this morning, child of God, there's somebody here, I don't know you, but God knows you, and you're almost this morning at breaking point. Well, the Lord has a lovely message for you through this psalm. Let me say something this morning, child of God. You can have the chaoses coming into your life. Perhaps it's from your home. Many a child of God has faced chaos in their home. Many a child of God suffers greatly within their four walls, you know. Maybe that's you this morning. Maybe it's in your workplace. Maybe it's to do with your health. But the scene of chaos can be painted into every Christian's life and can be very soon. 
without water. Psalm 3 was painted, or sorry, was written in a very dark time in David's life. And this psalm this morning brings hope and can bring confidence in the midst of chaos. In fact, in this psalm, there are four different kinds of pictures painted. And the first picture, let's call that picture this morning, it's verse 1 and 2. I'm going to call this picture the scene of chaos. Look what it says. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be that say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. I want to call that first picture the scene of chaos because that's what it is. You see, this psalm was written, as I have already told you, during one of David's darkest hours, and that hour was when he was fleeing from Absalom, his son. His own flesh and blood had turned against him. And I can tell you something now, child of God, there's nobody can, could, could perhaps hurt you more and pain you more than your flesh and blood. And here is a heartbroken father, King David, and he's on the run, and he's not running from Saul. He's running from Absalom his own flesh and blood. I'm telling you, many a child has brought heartache to the home. And maybe this morning you're here, and the words of the Lord Jesus could be your portion this morning. Matthew 10, 36, a man's foes are they of his own household. I'm telling you, David could preach that already. And you know, this morning, this morning, child of God, you can see the, 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 the crowd of these foes in verse 1. Look at them. How are they increased to trouble me? And maybe this is you this morning, child of God. You're facing some kind of crisis. And as David looks into the horizon and as he views the situation, he can see or feel the very hatred in his heart. He can see the very fierceness in their faces. And instead of what's against them decreasing, they're increasing. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? And you know, for David, as he uses his pen, I'll tell you now, he uses it like a paintbrush because he's painting a very dark background to the psalm. I wonder this morning, is he painting your picture? You're facing something this morning that seems impossible to conquer. And there seems to be no way out, perhaps, And for you, you're trying to find light somewhere, but you can't see it. And in fact, the situation looks like David this morning. It'll take a miracle to overcome what you face. Wonders at you this morning. It'll take a miracle to overcome what you face. Is the Lord speaking to somebody this morning? Is there somebody's heart that he's putting his finger upon? Whatever you're facing seems to be increasing. The psalmist said in Psalm 25, verse 17, he says, the troubles of my heart are enlarged 
wonder are the troubles of your heart enlarged this morning. Is there somebody here this morning and you're submerged in stress? You're in the depths of despair. I can tell you when the chips are down and everything's against you, the crowd can soon talk. Would you look at verse 2? Because this is what the crowd says, there is no help for him in God. When the chaos of life comes, that's not only, not only does the troubles enlarge themselves, I can tell you the enemy can enlarge. And the enemy here in David's case tries to rob him of his hope. There is no help for him in God. I wonder if there's somebody there this morning and you've heard that voice this week. There's no hope. There's no help. God has forgotten about you. God has forsaken you. Because, you see, this story is written against the background of 2 Samuel 16 and verse 8. And in 2 Samuel chapter 16, they're all gathered around David, and the crowd saying, The Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul. They're saying God has forgot about him because this is the, this is the punishment that he's going to get because of all the blood that he shed in the house of Saul. And I'll tell you something now, child of God. Do you see when the chaos of life comes and you're submerged in stress, do you know what the devil will try and get you to do? Blame you, for you to blame yourself for what's going on. The devil will try to get you to blame yourself for what's going on in your life. Verse 1 and 2, the scene of chaos. But when you slip now down to verse 3 and 4, boys, there's a wee flicker of light appears. And I want to call this scene now the scene of confidence. Take a wee look what it says there in verse 3. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My glory and the lifter up of mine head. Verse 4, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. Boys of boys, there's now a wee flicker of light appears in this dark page. It's the scene of confidence. In spite of the dark scene that he faces, in spite of the chaos that he faces, oh, but there's, there's this scene of confidence. But thou, O Lord art a shield for me. Do you see them two words, for me? Take a wee look at verse 2 there, verse 3. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. Do you see that word for? In the original, not that I'm a Hebrew scholar, this is what it reads, thou art a shield about me. That's what that means. But thou, O Lord, art a shield about me. You know what the psalmist was saying? But thou, O Lord, surround me like a shield. We were in holidays this year, and Nathan and Rebecca, Scott and Rose, they were all into these roller coasters. And Tracy said when she was young, she loved them, and she says, well, why don't you go? And Tracy says, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll keep your bags, and your daddy can go with you. And there wasn't a roller coaster that I wasn't on, and I didn't want our two to see that daddy was a card. But we went to a water park one day, and we went to a water park called Aqua, Aqua, Aquatica, I think he called it, or Aquatica. And there was this water slide called the Breakaway Falls. And you climb, and you climb, and I have no head for heights. I have no head for heights. Do you know if this pulpit was six inches higher, I don't think I could preach from it. I have no head for heights at all. And up I went, and up I went, and up I went. And I, I, I honestly thought the whole thing was moving. And up we went as high as we could go, and we came to this platform. And you stood in a capsule. There was three capsules. And you had to stand like this, your legs crossed, and your arms like this. And what happened was 
Suddenly the trap door gave way and you free fall 20 feet. And you went round and round and round this tube. And I remember before I went into that, I looked down and I said, what has brought me up here? So Nathan went into one tube, Rose went into the other tube. Our Rebecca wouldn't go up. That's how bad it was. And then the next thing I got into the other tube, and we were able to see each other. And we had a Stanley got there. Oh, you told me a rare looking sight. So we stood like us here. And all of a sudden, jump, Nathan went. And then I thought it was my turn. Jump, Rose went. And I felt like she didn't get me out of here. And the next thing, one. You got this three, two, one, and for badness they paused. And all of a sudden, the trap door opened and I fell. You talking about a sensation. I'll tell you, I didn't go up for the second go. But do you know, the Lord talks to me even in times like that. Because when I fell and I was going down that tube, all I could think of was that verse. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. Even though I was so high up, I was safe as houses because that shield kept me safe in spite of the danger that I was in. Do you want to know something, child of God? And this is what the Lord wants to tell your heart this morning. See, it's the Lord's message that I bring. And this is the wee message. Listen, whatever frightening chaos has come into your life, God wants you to know that he's a shield about you. And he will not let any harm come that you won't be able to bear. Thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. And as David looks at the horizon so dark and he sees the foes multiplying against him, he knew he was safe as houses because between him and what he faced, there was the Lord. Do you want to know something, child of God, this morning? You are being surrounded by God. That's what Rodney was teaching the boys and girls this morning. You're being sheltered in the very hand of God. That's why the hymn on the psalmist said, My times are in thy hands. Why should I doubt or fear? My father's hand will never cause his child a needless tear. You see, this confidence was in the protection of God. But look at verse number, number 4, because his confidence was in praying to God. For look what it says in verse 4, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. Do you know, wasn't the hymn writer proper? Wasn't the hymn writer correct when he penned these words? Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Why? It's all because we do not carry everything. Get that now. Everything. Everything. Everything means everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit, child of God. Right enough. Oh, what needless pain we bear. It's all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Listen, child of God, no matter what's against you or what's really frightening you, there's one thing the child of God can still do, and that's pray. And this is what David learned in this scene of chaos. He was being protected by God. He can pray to God. But then the flicker of light becomes a flame of light. Look at verse number 5 and 6. He says, I led me down and slept. I awaked, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. I'm telling you, boys, the flicker now becomes a flame. Can you see light appearing in this picture? Well, I'll tell you, this is a Thomas Kincaid picture now. All right, there's light appearing. I want you to notice this little phrase. I led me down 
and slept. In spite of the chaos that he was facing, there was something he was able to do. He laid down and slept. Why? For the Lord sustained him. You see, that is only the peace the child of God can know when it comes from the Lord. Two years ago, last Friday, I had the joy of leading our brother John Nugent to the Lord at a quarter past four in his own home. After I had led John to the Lord, do you know the first thing he said to me? It was this. Boys, that's a great weight of my man. As John quickly succumbed to that old cancer, I remember going to the Ulster Hospital to visit him in Dundon. And I remember going into the ward, but I noticed the nurses were around and they were working with him, and I stayed outside. And I remember the nurses asked him this one question. Mr. Nugent, are you afraid? I'll never to the day I die forget his answer. He says, I have nothing to be afraid of, nurse, because I am ready to go. And John Nugent, who is now in heaven with the Lord, could rest in that assurance. Tell me this, unsaved, can you rest in that assurance? For I'll tell you now, dying is serious business. Dying is serious business, and you listen to me now, you have only one go at it. And you need to come to John Nugent's Savior this morning, and you need to come to my Savior. You need to come to the Savior this morning, because I'll tell you what, if you die without him, you're going to hell. There's only one Savior that can save, and it's not yourself, sir. There's only one person that can save, and that's the Lord Jesus. Billy Clements was one of two policemen murdered outside the RUC gates in Ballygolly, 7th of December 1985, at half past six in the evening. That morning, that morning Billy Clements read Psalm 10. And in Psalm 10, this is what he read, The wicked lurketh in the quiet places of the village, to murder the innocent. The village where he served was Ballygolly. He said to his wife, going out that, he, he, he was doing the 4 to 12 shift, and he says, and as, he said, as he said that day, going out at 4 o'clock, he says, I believe God has been speaking to me. And if anything happens to me, you know it's all's well in my soul. Him and George Gilliland. George Gilliland was letting him out to go through, to go to the car to go home for his tea. At half six, and as soon as they opened the barrack gates, gunmen appeared and mowed them, both of them down, and planted a bomb and blew the barracks to smithereens. Billy Clemens said this one time, it was the same year as the Newry mortar attack, and I remember Jim White asked Billy Clemens, what would he do if the mortar had to come down? And he was sitting in Newry that night, and the mortar come down. He says, what would happen to me? What? He says, I'd be going out through the hole in the roof for the mortar come through, and before the debris would befall down, he says, I'd be before the Lord Jesus crying, worthy is the lamb that was slain. The child of God can know calm this morning in the midst of chaos. You see, this is a scene of calm. It begins with a scene of chaos, but then it moves to a scene of confidence. Now it comes to the scene of calm. I led me down and slept. Do you know what the prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah 26 and 3? 
Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stead on thee, because he trusteth in thee. You notice Psalm 3? There's the scene of chaos. There's the scene of confidence. There's the scene of calm. Then finally, the psalm bursts into light. The flicker, the flicker becomes a flame, but now the picture is filled with light. Look what it says, verse 7 and 8. The psalmist could say, Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. Here it is. For thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people, Salah. That's a scene of clarity. David was clear. that the enemy was defeated before they even moved. For thou, O Lord, hast smitten them upon the cheekbone. I want you, children of God, brother and sister in God, please get a hold of this. Don't let anybody try and encourage you this morning by telling you you're in the winning side. You're not in the winning side this morning. We are on the side that has already won. We are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. And child of God, come what may and come what must, if God be for us, who can be against? And child of God, whatever storm comes into your life, whether it's large or small, you remember this. Between you and that storm, there is God. And God will let nothing harm you that He won't give you the grace to bear it. And David could lift his voice in this wonderful psalm, couldn't he? And I'm telling you, even it begins with a very dark scene. It ends with a very bright scene. Oh, my God, thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Let me say this this morning, child of God. There's two enemies you and I face right now. We haven't faced them yet, but here's what God wants us to know. We haven't faced them yet, and we haven't met them yet, but here's what God wants you to know. The greatest enemies that men and women can meet today are death and the grave. The Lord has smitten death on the cheekbone, hasn't He? And the Lord has smitten the grave on the cheekbone. And thank God we need not fear death. We need not fear the grave because he conquered death, and he conquered the grave. And thank God, because he lives, we shall live. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Billy Clements, the policeman that I told you who was murdered in 1985, was buried in a little Methodist church outside the village of Ballygolly called Ballynanny Methodist Church. You walk into that little Methodist church surrounded by trees. On the right-hand side, the right-hand wall gone down, there his memorial plaque rests on the wall. At the very bottom of that plaque are these words. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Child of God, there is no chaos. 
without confidence. The psalmist in this psalm brings light into a very dark scene. And the Lord wants to bring that same light of hope into whatever dark scene you face. Rest in Him this morning. Victory is ours through Jesus. May God bless His Word to our hearts this morning. Our closing hymn.